Hello everyone uh, and welcome back. I'm thrilled to have you here for another Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, and uh, I'm thrilled to have you here for another engaging discussion. So well, uh, today uh, we have a very inspirational and thought-provoking topic uh, lined up that I'm really excited to share with you all. But before we jump into the topic, if you are new here, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notification so uh, you never miss out on our future content or the future topic of that alternative English. And to all our returning viewers, thank you so much for your continued support. Now, let's uh, get into today's discussion. We are going to explore an insightful essay that's called A Call for Youth that touches on some profound themes, or you can say that huge themes and ideas that I believe you know, are incredibly uh, relevant to uh, anyone's lives in the present generation or in today. So uh, if you talk about that, uh, A Call for Youth, uh, which is an essay that, uh, uh, that talks about the transformation power, uh, or you can say that the transformative power of education, the importance of compassion and empathy uh, and the role of youth as, as uh, uh, agents of positive change in society. So it is a rich symbol of, of rich uh, thoughts and ideas um, that you can't, you can't uh, wait to unpack with you. Okay, so, but before we uh, jump into the essay itself, I would love to hear from you. What, what are your initial thoughts on the topics a call for youth uh, that we are going to discuss today? Have you ever uh, faced a similar ideas in your own life or studies? So uh, if you have, then feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I always, uh, love for hearing from you and learning from your perspectives. Mm. So, all right, now that we have set the stage, let's uh, jump, jump right into our exploration uh, of this fascinating essay. I hope you are as excited as I am. Okay, so let me begin this uh, topic, uh, A Call for Youth, which is uh, written by uh, S. Radha Krishna. So, Dr. Sarvapalli Radha Krishna, as an eminent philosopher, teacher, and uh, you can say that a state man, who was known for his uh, huge knowledge, intellect, and ability to inspire each and everyone. So, uh, before we go to this essay, let me point out uh, he made a speech in his spirit. And uh, he, uh, his spirit, uh, sorry, his speech is nothing but to motivate, right? Uh, through this essay, is to inspire and motivate the youth to understand, recognize, understand and recognize their efforts, their efforts or their potential to effect positive change in society. So uh, the speech. The speech, uh, uh, the speech draws upon the uh, wisdom of uh, Dr. Sarvapalli Radha Krishna, and that uh, describes the importance of education, empathy, and social responsibility in shaping a better future. So the essay aims to what do what encourage encourage who encourage the young people to reflect on the challenges that they face the um, face with in the world. Right. and to see them as opportunities for growth and uh, uh, transformation. 
So if you talk about that, the speech calls them to hold the role as agents of change, to um, to continue no, uh, learning knowledge with the hard working and to cultivate qualities, cultivate qualities of, uh, uh, we can say that, uh, qual qualities such as empathy, empowerment, and uh, uh, compassion and solidarity, isn't it? Ultimately, the essay seeks to grow in youth, uh, in the youth, a sense of uh, their empowerment and a commitment to building, building a better society that is just inclusive and uh, prosperous for all, right? So um, the except that the author uh, is Radha Krishnan's speech emphasizes the importance of uh, selfless service and the dedication to uh, to one's country, one's own country, particularly among the uh, youth. So uh, his speech is made up with uh, service over self-interest. So you could say that service over self-interest, what do you mean by that? Dr. S. Radhakrishnan stresses that when engaging in any form of service, individuals should not focus on, uh, you can say that, what they, what they will return or what they will receive in return, but rather on how much they can contribute to the nation. So this highlights the principle of the selfishness, um, principle of uh, not selfishness, actually selflessness, right? So selflessness is called to when you do not care about your own interest and uh, the importance of dedicating oneself to the betterment of society without expecting um, the personal benefit. The second one is called as you one should also then uh, focus on uh, or called as one should pride in India's uh, heritage. So he reminds the audience of India's rich history and cultural heritage. So that continues centuries and influencing the entire East. So this serves as a reminder of the responsibility to uh, go straight and represent the values and teachings that have been passed down through uh, generation to generation. From the ancient civilization um, of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa to the present day, isn't it? So uh, beside that also, one must abide to the moral standards, ethical standards. So Dr. Radha Krishnan emphasizes the importance of abide or agree or adherent or obedient to certain standards, right? Both in domestic and international affairs. So this suggests nothing but a commitment to moral behavior, ethical behavior, and integrity, self-respect in all aspects of life. Whether you are at home or you are on the global stage, right? So in all these cases, you must obedient to your principle or called as your ethical standard or moral standards. The, uh, the next thing you would also find out, the expectations from the youth. So uh, when we talk, uh, we look into this particular except of Dr. Radha Krishnan sex, high standards, or you can say that high expectations. Uh, high expectations from whom? For the graduating young men and women, requesting them to lead, life, lead lives that are clean, that are noble and dedicated to selfless work. Right. So this reflects the belief that the future of the nation depends on the character and actions of its youth. So next is called as a means what he also expects from the role of intellectual uh, intellectuals in society. So Dr. Radha Krishnan uh, focuses the crucial role of intellectuals, knowledgeable people, including you could say writers, uh, scientists, uh, poets, uh, artists, uh, discoveries, uh, discoverers, and also investors in guiding the nation uh, through, you can say that uh, times of confusion and uh, through uh, uncertainty. He emphasizes the importance of universities um, as the centers for uh, developing these intellectuals, um, intellectual pioneers uh, who contribute to, to the advancement and uh, enrichment of society.
isn't it? So, <clears throat> Dr. Radhakrishnan's scientific habits, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan also focuses on scientific habits over more information. He argues that the true value of the university training lies uh, in the development of scientific habits of uh, mind rather than mere acquisition of information. This includes the ability to uh, make the differentiation between knowledge and opinion, facts and theories, and critical evaluate evidence. Critical evaluate evidence means whatever you have, you should critically analyze that, isn't it? So the, um, Dr. Radhakrishnan's highlights the importance of nurturing a spirit of research, which is uh, characterized by free inquiry and uh, traditional reflection. This attitude of open-mindedness open -mindedness, or you can say broad mentality uh, or rich thought and uh, interest, which is essential for intellectual progress and also uh, identifying the new ideas. Right. So in that case, um, his views, universities as more than just educational institutions. Um, so they have a broader societal responsibility. He sees them, uh, he sees that the universities as cultivators uh, of the higher mind of the country, shaping um, a certain science, shaping the knowledge and uh, gathering the knowledge and the perfect thoughts. Moreover, Universities create a community of uh, like-minded um, or the same kind of uh, uh, elitist individuals or called as educationists, united in the um, <clears throat> interest of knowledge and uh, shared um, cultural ideas. So he also pointed about what uh, in the modern context, Dr. Radhakrishnan declares that what universities must um, understand leadership in the area of ideas and ideals. So when we talk about ideas and ideals, it means perfect people and perfect ideas. They are very necessary for um, moving in intellectual progress and also shaping the cultural landscape of society in the country, right? So he also want that what, while accepting that higher education is an, uh, is an obligation or duty of the state, Dr. Radhakrishnan emphasizes the importance of maintaining that high standard, the spirit of free inquiry. He uh, makes a kind of a caution against uh, state control over academic freedom, uh, or you can say that academic policy uh, and practices. As intellectual progress, there is an environment of academic uh, freedom. Isn't it? Overly, if you talk about that, um, uh, Radhakrishnan's perspective is nothing but weakens the, um, that he finds out the weakens the critical role of uh, universities in uh, developing the intellectual growth. So that's what he wants to develop. So promoting free inquiry and shaping the principle and cultural fabric of society. Even if you talk about that, uh, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan, so who budgets that, Universities have traditionally been centers for the uh, continuation and uh, or presenting interest um, of the truth, irrespective of the conclusion. This highlights the importance of what academic freedom and intellectual integrity in the fight of uh, in the search for knowledge, isn't it? So, what is he uh, pointing here that? Uh, the goal of education is called as a self-development. He suggests that the ultimate aim of education is self-knowledge, where the self is what understood as a calm and discriminating spirit. This self awareness, uh, yes, this self awareness that uh, moves or transcends or go or uh, switch over from superficial identities such as nationality, from you can say that. Uh, nationalities, profession, or, so, um, or you can say that a social class that leads to a, a deeper understanding of one's humanity. Isn't it? So uh, he advocates of an education system that uh, 
develops, nurtures, and uh, you know abides or affirms or conforms the natural impulses or natural flows and ambitions of the child's mind, which uh, you can say that uh, which inherently identifies with the broader humanity. So, uh, according to him, true education is what true education should not stop these uh, um, innate uh, inclinations or in um, inborn interest, but rather encourage their expression and development. So, according to him, uh, you would say that he asserts uh, or he declares that true spirituality that moves really beyond religious denomination and is coming out in self-knowledge and uh, delicate sincerity or smooth sincerity or called as a uh, very comfortable sincerity. So true spirituality uh, that emphasizes what emphasizes the inherent divinity with each individual. Inherent divinity means called as a something called as a which is a, a created a kind of a peaceful with each individual regardless of race or creed. So whether you belong to black and white or you talk about rich and poor and calls for the spiritualization of the world in all its aspects. Isn't it? So <clears throat> his views on uh, spiritual awareness and social health. So you can talk about that uh, um, So you can uh, you can say that what uh, Dr. Radha Krishnan highlights so what um, spiritual awareness and social harmony. If I talk about spiritual awareness and social harmony, so social harmony means called as a social peace, right? So spiritual development and uh, uh, social peace. So he highlights the interconnectedness of spiritual awareness. Interconnectedness means what one connect with the other inside the society so and making a kind of a peace right suggesting that they are two sides of the same coin in a free society this implies that a society characterized by what uh, authentic spirituality that will naturally uh, take care of the peace and the cooperation among its member isn't it so uh, he also pointed that what you know, he addresses the concept of a spiritual <clears throat> civilization and its relationship um, to uh, human needs, education, poverty, and health. Right. Let's say that uh, he talks about that meeting human needs through education. Right. So he suggests that the role of the what the role of the teacher is what to satisfy the sense of human need. How now by providing to youth an understanding of the fundamental power and worth of humanity. This involves growing a sense of spiritual respect, uh, a supranatural, uh, you can say that, supranational culture, um, and a broad sense of humanity, humanity in students, isn't it? Yeah. So he also challenges the idea that a spiritual civilization must uh, necessarily be characterized by poverty and disease, while knowledge and spiritual fulfillment are uh, positively valuable. Dr. Radha Krishnan argues that poverty is uh, something, poverty and ill health should not be glorified uh, as necessary components of spiritual advancement. Poverty, poverty and ill health, it means called as you can't take the excuse of uh, poverty and ill health and for which you are unable to develop yourself. No, Dr. Radha Krishnan dis distinguishes what between voluntary poverty Right, which can be spiritually enriching and the involuntary poverty experienced by many in society, which he views so, um, which he views as a sign of what uh, laziness and failure. He implies that while poverty may have what uh, may have a spiritual um, significance or spiritual importance when chosen uh, willingly widespread poverty or that the poverty that spreads everywhere resulting from nothing but a systematic issue or systemic issues reflecting uh, societal shortcomings, reflects societal shortcomings. 
So uh, at the same time, he declares that what our philosophy of life should recognize the interest of health as a legal goal of human endeavor. So uh, means, yeah, human endeavor. This suggests that uh, material well-being, including you can say that uh, access to healthcare and all alleviation of poverty alleviation of poverty means that called as a reduction of poverty reducing poverty is essential for individual and social flourishing so uh, in that case if you talk about that uh, in this except dr radhakrishnan's speech or call to youth he address uh, or he addresses uh, the recent graduates and highlights the challenges and responsibility they face right in the context of india's post independence era right so um, even if you talk about that he starts uh, he makes a, or he begins by congratulating the graduates on their hard earned degrees uh, accepting their dedication and discipline in achieving their academic goals isn't it so and he emphasizes the importance of the qualities that the graduates uh, presented during their university years, uh, requesting them to what now continue exhibiting these qualities in their future uh, endeavors, and this suggests the importance of uh, continuation, perseverance, determination, hard working, diligence, and commitment to do the excellence. Isn't it? So uh, the realistic expectation, if you see that he adopts a realistic tone, uh, stopping from making promises of men's uh, uh, glittering prizes or comfortable positions. Right? Instead, he accepts the challenging nature of the times ahead and the uncertainties that accompanies them. So uh, it's a reality, like what once you get into the graduate or uh, after completion of the graduation, so you think about what a good job uh, or called as a comfortable life or called as a uh, some kind of a exceptional reward or uh, so all such kind of things but he points out that these are uh, these are means uh, these are not surely uh, reaching to you or these may not be um, given to you but at the same time you must accept that that means you need to face the challenging nature of the times and the kind of uncertainty or unsurety that associated isn't it? So you need to do the women's uh, hard working and understand the perseverance. So according to him, he contextualizes or he uh, remembers that India's current situation by comparing it to historical movements such as Renaissance, re the Reformation, the Industrial Revolution, and the political revolutions. He notes that these uh, transformative events have uh, occurred in India within a you know compressed time frame, uh, in a very limited time frame, indicating the rapid pace of change and the development. So, and therefore, Dr. Radhakrishnan means underscores the crucial role of education. So, or points out more on the crucial role of education. So, how education, particularly in fields such as science technology, engineering, and agriculture in driving social and economic, economical progress. Uh, so not economical progress, economic progress. He emphasizes the need for universities to produce skilled professionals who can contribute to India's development in various sectors, isn't it? So uh, and that is the region you would find out the importance of recognizing the science and technology alone are not sufficient to bring about meaningful change in society. Like he also pointed that uh, science and technology, limitation of science and technology. So he acknowledges that while science and technologies are essential, science and technology are essential for progress and development, they are not the sole solution to society's problems. Right. He points out that even highly advanced countries may still struggle, struggle with what internal strife, internal problems and failure to make sure the peace, safety and security of their people. Isn't it? So uh, therefore, he highlights the interconnectedness of science and philosophy. 
noting that science is also regarded um, as a branch of philosophy. And this suggests that a holistic or overall understanding of the world and uh, you can say that uh, human nature is necessary for addressing uh, the difficult societal issues, isn't it? So the next one you would find out uh, uh, Dr. Radha Krishnan's argued that the concern of universities extends beyond producing uh, technically skilled profession, uh, professionals. He believes that universities have a responsibility uh, to, to cultivate qualities such as compassion, compassion is called as a kindness or empathy and uh, a kind of a freedom spirit in their graduate or democratic spirit in their graduate. And this implies that education should focus not only on technical uh, expertise, but also on nurturing ethical values and uh, social consciousness. So we shall not depend only on those technical things, uh, STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, uh, and management. Though we know that they are necessary, but at the same time, we need to also think about developing the moral uh, moral values and ethical values and social consciousness. So he also draws up uh, he also draws up on teachings uh, teachings of religion, right? So teaching of religion, especially referring to uh, referencing the uh, Upanishads to focus the inherent value and uh, inherent value means in depth value. Um, and dignity of every human individual by you know, invoking invoking the principle of uh, uh, what do we say that tat thom asi tat thom asi so you would find out the phrase is given which means that are you right that are you or that art thou which means that are you Dr Radha Krishnan emphasizes the interconnectedness and divinity of all things suggesting that this philosophical perspective should what uh, uh, you can say that uh, um, and from how individuals treat so one another in the society, isn't it? So at the same time, means uh, Dr. S. Radha Krishnan's speech reflects on the gap between what the principles uh, enshrined in the constitution or that's called it a blessing in the constitution and the realization in uh, daily life, right? He pointed that the concept of a divine spark, the concept of a divine spark. What do you mean by the concept of divine spark? There's something called as a, uh, indicating about uh, uh, divine means called as a heavenly spark or heavenly blessing. So he pointed about Buddhist uh, beliefs, uh, noting that each individual is believed to have a kind of a fire to the divine and has the potential to uh, do what become a bodhisattva, bodhisattva, B O D H I S A T T V A, bodhisattva. However, he suggests that bodhisattva means what? Can possess the buddhi, Buddhist knowledge and Buddhist wisdom. However, he suggests that simply uh, declaring that this principle is not enough. So they must be, uh, you know, taken an example in the actions and the attitudes of individuals. So um, <clears throat> the importance of not political democracy, but also social and economical democracy, also where he emphasizes. Dr. Radha Krishnan declared that true democratic change is what? True democratic change requires a shift in mindset, shift in mindset and uh, outlook among the populace or among the men's uh, people, right or not. So um, Dr. Radha Krishnan, uh, who advocates uh, for the study of humanities, um, including philosophy and religion, and um, as essential, as essential for what? Promoting uh, democratic values and attitudes. He suggests that exposure to great literature and engagement with the philosophical and uh, religious ideas can help individuals uh, you know internalize democratic principle and also change the society so uh, he uh, his his knowledge uh, means uh, impact a lot and uh, he highlights the profound impact that what uh, literature philosophy and religion can have on 
have on what shaping individual and society. So in that case, you could say that it gives um, it gives importance to the literature, philosophy, and religion. Dr. Radhakrishnan argues uh, um, about these are the things, and also he urges the audience, or he urges to the readers to engage deeply with the, these disciplines, not as casual, casual readers, but with a concentration and reflection. Isn't it? So he pointed about the transformation and uh, through education. So transformation through education, Dr. Radha Krishnan suggests that uh, the study of great literature, principle, uh, philosophy, and religion can lead to a fundamental change in the character of individuals and the nature of society. So uh, he believes that what by internalizing democratic principles, democratic principles, which called as a uh, understanding the rules of free people, um, free people, so individual can contribute to creating a more democratic and just society, and a just society. Uh, yeah. So uh, you would find out. He emphasizes the importance of balancing technical education with the humanistic values. He said that what means the need of uh, the need for human nature. So. Um, he declares that while it is very crucial to produce um, a great scientist or you can say engineers and technologists, it is equally important to cultivate humanistic values, isn't it? So in humanistic values in there, he highlights the danger of uh, neglecting compassion and humanity in the pursuit of uh, technical expertise, mentioning the famous statement that literacy without compassion can lead to them. Uh, what kind of a behavior? Demonic. Demonic means brilliant behavior. If you don't have the feelings like we learn in the kind of a uh, kind of a, um, a writing of another uh, topic, which is called the general learning without feeling, in which it is stated that you must have a kind of a uh, emotion what you are studying. So similar to that, the author stated that um, the humanistic value is also highly essential. Because that can, uh, without that or absence of that, you can lead to a demonic behavior, isn't it? So, uh, and the, uh, university have a responsibility that what to uh, inculcate that, not only impact knowledge, but also to develop compassion and empathy in their so students. A true university, according to Dr. Radha Krishnan, so Dr. S. Radha Krishnan, is what should produce graduate who are not only learned, but also compassionate towards humanity's suffering, isn't it? So um, you can say that Dr. Radhakrishnan expresses deep, deep disappointment uh, when he sees students uh, squander their precious, squander means waste their precious year at the university. He believes that the relationship between teachers and students should be relating to, uh, akin to a family. It's, you can say that what? It's a kind of a, um, a student and teacher's relation uh, is nothing but a kind of a family. Uh, and that are characterized by cooperation rather than men's antagonism. So you would find out that in colleges and universities, students do uh, protest, uh, students uh, men go against the teachers or uh, professors. So uh, that shows the kind of antagonism and that should not be there. They, should have a kind of a cooperation, right? So uh, he also focuses more on uh, character in shaping the destiny of individuals and nations. Dr. Radha Krishnan declares that a nation cannot be progressed or great without individuals, uh, individuals of strong character who treat others with respect and uh, empathy. So he draws upon the teachings, he draws upon the teachings of ancient texts, uh, such as uh, Sastras, uh, while emphasizing the importance of view, others as a reflection to reflection of oneself. This suggests that compassion and empathy are not just uh, modern ideals, uh, but have been valued throughout the, throughout the history or throughout history, you could say. So uh, he emphasizes the importance of character and selfless dedication to service, particularly for the youth of India. Right. So uh, he declares that without strong character, individual cannot achieve greatness uh, in either public or student life. 
He like uh, he likens character to the ground beneath one's feet, emphasizing its importance as the foundation upon which all other uh, successful goals are built. Isn't it? So the principle of service he advocates for uh, selfless service, where individual focus on what they contribute rather than what they can receive. Dr. Radhakrishnan's urges young men and women to approach their endeavors at their fightings with a mindset of dedication and service to their country. Right. So uh, even he talk about that uh, pride in Indian heritage. He also talked about adherence to standards. He also talked about expectation of um, you can say that graduating youth, right or not. So and uh, he talks about guidance uh, from intellectual pioneers, intellectual pioneers means. Um, well, Man's uh, top people, famous people, and he also believed that university as what centuries of knowledge, so value of university training. So he also believed that man's uh, uh, the spirit of research as the example of a free inquiry and also uh, logical reflection. So he suggests that universities. Uh, play a crucial role in fostering this spirit among students and faculty, thereby advancing knowledge and understanding. Isn't it? So, uh, at the end, uh, I would like to uh, make a kind of a conclusion here. But before I uh, go to the conclusion, the last uh, couple of lines which have been pointed or highlighted by Dr. Radhakrishnan and stated that um, his vision is to creating a university world, right? That's something called as uh, how universities have. Universities have historically cultivated and a university world characterized by a shared community of cultured, uh, cultural ideas and a collective pursuit of fundamental aims and ideas. He said, uh, this suggests that universities serve as hubs for intellectual exchange and collaboration. So, uh, developing a sense of like-mindedness among scholars and students. So, um, he also talks about uh, that in today's changing circumstances, it is universities that must take um, the lead in shaping and advancing ideas and ideas. So, um, and that is what nothing but the importance of universities as centers for the centers of intellectual innovation and thought leadership in society. Right. So he talks about state funding and academic freedom, that higher education is a duty of the state, uh, but he also gives a kind of a caution against uh, state control over academic policies and practices. He uh, emphasizes the importance of maintaining academic freedom um, and argues that intellectual progress is highly uh, necessary, depends on the spirit of free inquiry and the interest of truth regardless of consequences. And finally, he talks about ambition of uh, universities. He identifies the pursuit and practice um, of truth as the, uh, as the uh, core ambition of uh, universities uh, and focusing their commitment to uh, seeking knowledge and advancing understanding without fear, uh, fear of reprisal or censorship. This aligns with the broader mission of uh, universities as institutions dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and the dissemination of the truth, isn't it? Okay, uh, so overly Dr. Radha Christian's uh, speech uh, emphasizes the critical role of universities in fostering or developing intellectual progress, preserving academic freedom, uh, and leading society in the exploration of ideas and ideals. He advocates for a balance between state support for higher education and the uh, autonomy of universities to pursue truth and intellectual inquiry. So at the end, I would like to conclude with the notes that Paul uh, Dr. S. Radha Christians, who draw many of the conclusions. So the first one, universities as pillars of 
intellectual progress. So um, where he talks about or uh, emphasizes the crucial role of universities in advancing knowledge, fostering critical thinking, preserving academic freedom. So he views uh, universities as sanctuaries or called as a temple of the nation's higher mind, responsible for developing the conscience and the ideals of society. Second is called as an integration of science, humanities, and ethics. So he gives um, importance while recognizing the importance of scientific values, technical education, rather Krishna also focuses the need for humanistic values and moral principles. He advocates um, for a, a overall development approach to education that combines uh, scientific inquiry with the kindness, empathy, and a sense of social responsibility. So uh, then uh, you talk about leadership in guiding society. Radha Krishnan believes that universities should achieve uh, leadership in guiding the society through the challenges of the modern world. Uh, he sees them as a hubs of intellectual innovation and thought leadership, right? thoughtful leadership, shaping cultural ideas and ideals that can positively impact society. So, and the last one, where you can say that balance between state support and academic freedom. So Radha Krishnan accepts the state's duty to fund higher education, but warns against excessive state control over academic policies and practices. He supports for maintaining the spirit of free inquiry and intellectual dependence, essential for uh, intellectual progress and pursuit of truth. In conclusion, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan uh, passages highlights the pivotal role of uh, universities in shaping society so and uh, fostering intellectual progress and uh, you can say that saving academic freedom. He calls for a balanced approach to education that uh, uh, you can say that merges scientific knowledge with humanistic values and he emphasizes the universe, importance of universities in leading society towards a better future. So this, uh, this is something that you would find out out of the whole text. So overall, if I talk about a short summary of it, then I can say that the passage from Dr. S. Radhakrishnan Krishnan speeches uh, focuses the crucial role of universities in shaping society, fostering intellectual progress, and preserving academic freedom. So Radha Krishnan emphasizes the need for balanced approach to education, merging, integrating scientific values or knowledge with the humanistic values and ethical principles. He calls for universities to cultivate um, uh, kindness, compassion, and social response, socially responsible individuals who can uh, lead society through the challenges and intellectual independence. Uh, he cautioned against its excessive state control over academic policies or universities. Overall, the passage highlights the profound influence of universities in guiding societal development and promoting the interest of truth uh, and knowledge. Isn't it? Now, this is what you would find out. Now, if I talk about Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan, so who, he, who is he actually? Like we already understood that he was an Indian philosopher, statesman, and educator. So who served as the first vice president of India in the year of 1952 to 1962, 10 years, and the second president of India, 1962 to 1967, for five years. He was born on September 5, 1888, in a small town, uh, a small village in Tamil Nadu, India. So Radha Krishnan was renowned is a contribution to what contribution to uh, philosophy uh, yeah contribution to philosophy particularly in the fields of what uh, comparative religions uh, comparative religion and philosophy he held the position of spalding professor of eastern religion uh, eastern religions and ethics at the university of oxford and then after served as the vice chan chancellor of andhra university and B.H. Banaras Hindu University. In addition to his academic pursuits, Radha Krishnan was actively involved uh, in politics and played, uh, you could say, that uh, an important role in India's struggle 
for independence. He represented India at various um, international forums and was known for his what um, fluent speeches and diplomatic skills. After serving as president of India, Radha Krishnan continued to be a prominent figure in public, um, public life, advocating for education, peace, and uh, you could say that uh, cultural exchange. He received numerous honors and awards throughout his lifetime, including the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian hour. So Dr. Radha Krishnan, uh, Sarvapali Radha Krishnan passed away on April, uh, April 17, 1975, leaving behind a rich legacy or a, a foot, footprint in the history as a scholar, statesman, and a visionary leader. He is remembered as one of India's, uh, you could say that most respected and influential figure, celebrated for his contribution to philosophy, education, and public service. Isn't it? So that's what you would find out about uh, him, as well as his uh, topic called A Call to Youth, an inspiring speech, so which urges young men and women to dedicate themselves to the service of their country with selflessness and dedication, isn't it? So uh, if you observe that, the author, Sarvapali Radha Krishnan's tone in this context uh, can be uh, described as inspirational, authoritative, and uh, you can say that uh, persuasive. Dr. Sarvapali Radha Krishnan speaks with a conviction and uh, authority, uh, authoritative. So, requesting the youth to hold their responsibility to responsibilities to society and uh, uphold the values of the nation, he adopts a commanding tone. Right. So, to express the importance of education, moral integrity, and service to others. Right. Additionally, there is a sense of urgency in his words, as he emphasizes uh, the challenges facing. India and uh, the importance ro important role that young people and universities must play in confronting them. Overall, the tone is one of encouragement, guidance, and a call to action. Right. So uh, this is the kind of a uh, essay, a call to youth, inspiring speech by Dr. Radhakris S. Radhakrishnan was published. So because when you think about this particular topic, when does this essay or when did the essay published and where? Right. So if you say that this essay, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan's essay was published in uh, chapter 8 of the book on education by Sarvapali Radhakrishnan. On education is the name of the book and chapter 8 in which this particular speech was published. In the specific publication, as obviously uh, no idea about it, but uh, if you talk about that, uh, uh, this particular uh, man's book, so which uh, in which uh, the book, which is uh, actually giving the details about India's potential uh, values over material gain, cultural heritage, role of education and intellectual leadership, importance of free inquiry and uh, character building, spiritual and social harmony. Leadership and ideas, leadership and ideas and ideas, isn't it? Now, as we have discussed everything, uh, let's go to some of the questions. So, uh, those questions are known as uh, uh, insight, indirect based questions. So, you don't expect the kind of a question would uh, come directly from the bookish part. Um, so, here the first question coming to the mind is that what? What does the author imply about the purpose of education when he mentions the need for universities to produce, to um, technically skilled and professionally competent individuals? What does the author imply about the purpose of education when he mentions the need for universities to produce technically skilled and professionally competent individuals? So, I have given these questions in, uh, in your PPT. You may uh, see them, and if you need the answer or 
maybe I mean, I'll put the answer there. So if you observe that, the question is stated about what does the author imply uh, when he talks about the purpose of education, when he mentioned the need for university to produce technically skilled and professionally competent individuals. So the author implies that while technical skills and professional competence, the technical skills and professional competence are important outcomes of education, they're not sufficient on their own. Right. He suggests that what education should also focus on what growing qualities like uh, compassion, empathy, and ethical behavior in students, thereby emphasizing the importance of an overall approach of education or overall development is highly necessary. That is why. Now, uh, if you uh, want to understand the, or if you want to know the, or if you want to point out the answer, then pause the video and listen to it uh, again to get the uh, complete answer. So, complete answer from there. So, the next question, question two, which is stated about from the author's discussion on the importance of universities as centuries of the inner life of the nation, what can be inferred about his views on the role of higher education in society? From the author's discussion on the importance of universities as centuries of the inner life of the nation, what can be inferred about his views on the role of higher education in society? Well, if I talk about that, the author suggest that universities play a crucial role beyond academic instruction. They serve as um, centers for intellectual and moral development, and that shapes the concerns, that shapes the concerns mean development of your mind and um, the um, perfect person for the nation. So this implies that the author believes higher education institutions should not only focus on academic, excellence, but also contribute to the cultivation of moral values and ethical responsibilities among uh, responsibility among students. Now, third question is, based on the author's emphasis on, on the pursuit of truth, regardless of consequences, what inferences can be drawn about his standpoint on academic freedom? So you could say that the author advocates for academic freedom and the spirit of free inquiry within universities, he suggests that intellectual progress is contingent upon the ability to pursue, to pursue truth without fear of repercussions. Or uh, This implies that the author values academic uh, independence and believes it is essential for the advancement of knowledge and understanding. Then fourth question, from the author's discussion on the importance of character, humility, what influence can be made about its perspective on leadership qualities? So we could say that the author values uh, humility and integrity as essential qualities for effective leadership. He suggests that uh, individuals lacking in character cannot reach great heights, um, implying that uh, the true leadership requires moral integrity, selflessness, and a dedication to serving others uh, rather than seeking personal benefits, isn't it? Then the last question, fifth one, based on the author's advice to students regarding Mother India's expectation, what can be inferred about his vision for the future generation? Well, this is a very, uh, very good question. So where you could uh, get, get the answer that the author sees a future generation of young men and women who are dedicated to selfless work and uphold noble values. He emphasizes the importance of serving society and going, abiding to certain moral standards, suggesting that what uh, he hopes for a generation that gives importance the greater good over personal interest. So these are the couple of questions so that we uh, discussed in this. So um, what are the things that we have discussed so far? We have discussed the introduction where the speaker addresses the audience as young friends and setting a tone of camaraderie and shared purpose. So they established themselves as a fellow traveler on the journey of life. 
So that's the interaction. We also discuss about the challenges and opportunities that the author remembers. Second, uh, third is called as a commitment to education and social changes. Then we discuss about the cultivation of qualities and call to action. That these are the things uh, which conclude with the call to action, urging the audience to hold their potential as agents to change. And it reflects Dr. Radhakrishnan's vision of you, a catalyst uh, for society and economic transformation. So these are the things we have discussed so far. I hope uh, you enjoyed the session and please don't forget to um, subscribe and like if you like uh, the discussion about the topic of all for youth written by S. Radha Krishnan. So Sarvabali Radha, Dr. Sarvabali Radha That's all for the day. Thank you. We'll meet um, another session with uh, another topic. So that's all. Thank you. Thanks for your patience.